This video was sponsored by FlexiSpot. More on them later. Hey there, my name is Rishabh. I'm a student studying neuroscience at Harvard and I make videos to help students reach their fullest potential. Today I wanna to talk about three apps that I have on my MacBook Pro that have completely revolutionized the way that I look at time management, organization, and productivity. And so the first app, without further ado, is Amy, A-M-I-E. And there's a whole lot going on here, from a to-do list to a calendar to emails all in one. But let me give you just a little bit of motivation, right? When I started college, when I graduated high school, moved over here to Cambridge, Mass., started college, I was you know, immediately given a ton of schoolwork in terms of science and math classes that I was taking, all these problem sets and homework that I'm sure a lot of students can relate to. But on top of that, I was doing research at a lab and I was running a part-time business that I have right here, a YouTube channel as well as an academy online. And so when dealing with all of these things, plus, you know, just as people say, sleeping and social life and all of this, it becomes really hard to manage all of that. And I think all of you know this, but there was just simply not enough time in my day to get all of the things that I wanted to get done, right? And you know, that's just a fact of the matter. That's why a lot of people end up having to drop certain activities. But there are some crazy people out there, myself included, who just want to optimize every last second of their lives. And this is a perfect app to do that. Amy allows you to integrate your emails, your calendar, and your to-dos in one place. And this just allows you to be on top of everything that's going on in your life. I've tried Notion Calendar, aka Cron. I've tried Google Calendar. I've tried the Apple Reminders list. I've tried Google Keep. All of these other apps, nothing comes close to Amy. First, of course, the UI is, is pretty beautiful. There's you know a lot going on just because I have a bunch of tasks here and there, but it you know, you'll learn it pretty easily. It's not super complicated. But as you can see over here on the left side, you have an inbox with your tasks and on the right side, you have your calendar. And this is where a lot of people get confused because they're like, what, it has both in one? But the crazy part is you get to drag and drop your tasks onto your calendar and you get to drag and drop your calendar onto your tasks. And so when you have 16 calendars, I'm not gonna press this because it's gonna leak my emails, but when you have 16 calendars across you know, five, six email inboxes, whether that's you know, your work, your lab, your school, your personal, your other organizations, all in one, tons of calendars you're subscribed to, it becomes really hard to have that integrate with your to-dos. But Amy makes it absolutely flawless. So as you can see over here, I need to fill out the Harvard Health Waiver. The due date for that is gonna be, I think it's like June or July 8th or something. So as you can see, just gonna go ahead and set a deadline. The reason I'm doing this is just so you guys can see all the cool features they have. Uh, you, you can set priorities in terms of priority lists uh, as well as deadlines. But as you can see, now that that's there, you see this little sparkle on the right hand side here? Well, that is Amy using something called AI scheduling. And AI scheduling is pretty crazy, right? It's just using some form of generative AI, like it's using the LLM to look at what the task is, um, understand that with context, and then figure out what the best time to schedule that activity is. And although it's due on July 8th, it's actually scheduling it for July 5th at 8 a.m. because it thinks that at 8 a.m. I'm gonna get this done. And it may or may not be wrong, but it's gonna adjust based on whether or not I do end up getting that task done. So I think that's really cool. And um, I love that AI scheduling piece. The other thing that's really awesome is the natural language processing right here in the AI chat. So uh, let me just move this down a little bit so people can actually see. If I type in, I wanna meet Bob, you are Bob, let's say, at 2 p.m. on Thursday, right? It's probably gonna be confusing for Google Calendar to figure out what the heck I mean with this. Well, Amy, you just hit enter. It's gonna like load for a couple seconds and uh, I'm just gonna chat with it. And hopefully, fingers crossed, this is still in alpha mode. As you can see, it made a schedule with Bob, which is pretty cool. And then the final, final thing I'm gonna show you here is the emails. And so the email integration is really cool. I've been trying it out for about a month now and basically gets all your emails, uses AI to figure out which ones are spam and I found their AI just works so much better than Google's Gmail AI that supposedly classifies things. And this thing has a broader sample of spam, so it will categorize you know, something from Grubhub or DoorDash as spam. 
like it should be rather than clouding up your main inbox. Just because it's not a scam doesn't mean that it shouldn't be in spam. Like I would much rather prefer to unsubscribe from all of that and have only my important tasks here. And the crazy part is it allows you to treat your emails as if they were to do tasks. And I just love that piece. So let's say I, I wanna open up this. As you can see right here, um, there is a task list at the bottom here where I can actually mark this as done or schedule it for later. So it allows you to treat your emails as if they were tasks. And I just love that piece. So that's it for Amy. Let's move on to our next app. And now a word from our sponsor. So if you use the techniques I'm showing you in this video, you're going to be studying a lot. And I've got just the thing for you. If you study, you're probably using a desk and I have the best possible desk right here. It's called the FlexiSpot Standing Desk. So let's stand up together and let me show you what this is all about. So first off, why do you even need a standing desk? Well, to be honest, after the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of our work has shifted from in-person and on paper onto online assignments given on computers. And as a result, people are just sitting their lives away at a desk, at a couch, on a bed, and instead people need to stand up. In fact, standing activates more muscles and burns calories actively. I use my FlexiSpot E7 Plus every single day. I use it to study, to take notes, and to film YouTube videos. Something really cool is that FlexiSpot has a weight capacity of 440 pounds, and it's extremely stable. A super awesome feature of the FlexiSpot standing desks is this little control panel where you can actually preset exact heights for standing and for sitting and just other modes in general. I find it to be extremely helpful and it automatically moves up using the motorized system. The reason I chose FlexiSpot is because I love their surface. It's a beautiful bamboo wood desk that just complements the room so nicely. I'm personally a minimalist, and so I don't really like those really flashy sort of furnitures, but FlexiSpot standing desks are absolutely amazing. As you can see right here, it has a beautiful surface, as well as some nice organization supply add-ons that I put on the desk. So what are you waiting for? Go order a FlexiSpot desk today. And remember, you can use the discount code in the description box down below. So our next app is Granola, and I love Granola. It is another AI tool, which is probably a common theme you're seeing of how AI is just revolutionizing everyone's productivity and to-dos. And I think what's gonna end up happening is people are gonna get their work done one or two hours faster every day, and they're gonna be like, wow, time to chill. Like, thank, thank you, AI, this is awesome. And then in a couple of years, workplaces, and everyone's gonna realize, hey, that just means we can get another hour or two of productive work from people. But uh, while we can, let's enjoy the benefits of it. And Granola allows you to do that. Um, it automatically syncs all of your you know, meetings in this one place. So all of the meetings I have populate up here. And let me just show you how this works. Um, it also takes in your tasks as well in case you, know, you wanna make notes about it, which I think is kind of interesting. But um, obviously this isn't really a meeting. Jim is not a meeting. But what it's gonna do is it's gonna automatically transcribe whatever is coming out from my MacBook audio. So right now that's gonna be, you know, nothing because nothing is playing, but it also transcribes what's coming in from the microphone, which is my voice. So what effectively you get is in meetings, a very accurate transcription and summary of what just happened. And as you can see, I can press stop transcript and generate notes. It's gonna analyze whatever was said in the meeting and come up with a really nice, you know, note list very easily. Like, yeah, of course, ChatGPT can use do this as well, but having an app for that just automatically does it, I think is really nice. And then also you can just copy the link for the notes and share it with people. Um, I'm working on like kind of a part-time startup thing that I'm doing right now. And I work with like, um, you know, kind of under me, quote unquote, are some developers who I kind of tell like, hey, here's the vision, here's what we should do this next week, etc. And so when I have meetings with them, it's not like I wanna gatekeep those notes for myself, I actually wanna share those notes with them. And that allows me to do that very easily. I can just press copy link or copy text, send it over to them. And the cool part is it even has a chat window with the notes. As you can see over here, it actually allows anyone just go in here and start chatting about the meeting. So you can say, what did Bob say? It knows who Bob was based on the voice that the person has and um, it just works very flawlessly. 
Uh, there's not much more to say about granola, so I'm not going to yap about it too much longer. But um, I just think it's a really nice app. And the crazy thing is right now it's like completely free. Um, what's going to probably happen is in a couple months when they have a lot of users, they're going to start charging for it. So in the meantime, you guys should totally enjoy granola. Check it out. Link will be in the description down below. Our final app here is called Arc, and you probably already got a little bit of a glimpse of it at the beginning here. Arc is made by the browser company, and it's basically your Chrome killer. And I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that, you know, I don't necessarily recommend Arc to every person in the world. I think that Chrome and Safari are excellent browsers, and Arc is truly for the power users out there. Like there are marginal benefits that you may or may not appreciate from Arc. And so my honest review is that I think it probably makes me 0.5 to 1% more productive, which is like not that much um, considering the ease of just, oh, let me just use Google Chrome or Safari. So if that doesn't sound very appealing to you, 0.5 to 1%, you know, just skip ahead this, this part. You don't even need to watch this part. But if you are a power user, like productivity addict, and you really just like to optimize your life like that, get Arc. Um, I think what's really nice is it, you know, the side that you probably noticed the taskbar moves to this left side here with all your tabs. And, um, you know, some people are like, well, what's the purpose of that? I actually, you know, I don't think it's fundamentally different from having it on the top, but somehow this list in my mind makes me feel more like these are to do's. And when I watched a YouTube review of Arc before getting it, the person said the exact same thing. So I think this is true that, you know, it's psychologically somewhere it makes you feel like these are to do's. So rather than having, I was the type of person who have like probably 15, 20 tabs open at a time. Now I generally have like maybe five or six. And as you can see here, there's like the different workspaces rather than creating like a bunch of these windows like Google Chrome does, it's just built into Arc, which I think is fantabulous. Um, the other thing is if you go into a different app and you click on a link that would open up Arc. So like, let's say I, you know, in this task, I say like, sciencefair.io, just this website, right? Then I click on this. What it's actually gonna do is it's gonna open up Arc, as you can see in this window right here. Um, and the really awesome part about this window is it's not in the browser. So it doesn't distract from Amy. Like I can just control W this and it goes away. And Amy is still open behind it right here. And that part is actually just so much nicer. I don't know why Chrome doesn't have that. So that, those are like the 0.5 to 1% productivity increases that I think this allows you to have. Um, beyond that, something that I really like is the ability to have these workspaces. So on the left hand side, as you can see right here, there's some screenshots. And um, basically something that's really annoying in every other you know use case of MacBooks is it'll open up the screenshot in the bottom right corner over here. Um, and then, yeah, you can paste it in, like whatever, you can use it. And that's all nice, but what if you wait an extra three seconds? What's gonna happen is, you know, I'll just A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, it went away. And now it's just gone. And in order to get it, I need to open up my finder and search through my files to find that. And that's just so annoying. Arc, on the other hand, has this beautiful little pop-up in the bottom left corner right here. And as you can see, it shows you your recent screenshots and screen recordings, so they're just really easy to grab from. In addition, it has this easel feature, which allows you to keep all of your images and whatever organized. So you can just import stuff in here while you're working on stuff throughout the day and build your own little easel. And just in terms of organizing your downloads and all that media, I think that is the biggest save from Arc. Um, I think that, yeah, just definitively is the best piece about Arc is that you don't have to go in your finder every single time to find those files, um, you know, or, or click on the downloads and then go to the downloads folder and then go through everything you downloaded. When in Arc, it's literally all right here and it's beautifully done so, right? It's, it's like all two days ago, like it has everything just so beautifully done. And so I really appreciate that about Arc. I think it's kind of like a next generation browser, quote unquote, and um, it offers those kind of minor productivity improvements that people could benefit from.
Before we hop off here, I just wanna show FlexiSpot once again. Thanks so much for sponsoring this video. I think that their T-shaped desks, especially some of these like the E7s are great models, especially with the standing features. But um, also if you are on a budget, you can definitely check out another FlexiSpot desk called the E2 desk. And so if you head over here, you type in E2, as you can see, these are very affordable if you are on a budget. So for instance, the E2 Pro, you get the essential standing desk if you're really looking for that standing feature for just 170 bucks. So I think this is a great deal. Um, and FlexiSpot has been a continued sponsor and supporter of this channel. So I'd really appreciate if you go on and check out FlexiSpot. Uh, an additional thing to look out for is if you use the promo code YTB30, you'll actually get $30 off um, on a purchase of $500 or more. So thanks FlexiSpot for sponsoring the video once again, and I'll see you all in the next video.